So we've got everything required here. We've got noodles, we've got broth. I will show you what you need to beat. Okay. Here we go. This slurp off. Mm-mm-mm. Tokyo, Japan, a stunning, stimulating, and seductive city. Modern, maybe even futuristic, packed with people yet eerily quiet. Each block of the city is stacked with restaurants and winding alleyways ready to be explored. And with plenty of food to choose from, I plan on trying it all. In this series, we're going down every dark alley, each fish market, and hole in the wall is Ikaya to bring you the most unique food experiences Tokyo has to offer. And today's mission is ramen. Literally every year, 17 million foreign visitors come to Japan to try ramen noodles. Fact. Yes. If this is your idea of ramen, allow me to change your worldview completely. As long as you keep the ramen definition, you've got some really funky combinations of ramen. Here in Tokyo, the world of ramen has expanded past a quick lunchtime treat to an edible art form. I love the absolute attention to detail until it's done perfectly. I'm talking soupless ramen. I gotta say, this is probably my top three ramens ever. Ramen with super thick broth. Almost like a puree. That does not remind me of ramen at all. And even a black ramen. Black as night, darker than my heart. This is the lunch of my dreams. So put on your pants with the elastic waistband because today we're eating big in Tokyo, Japan. Today I am with a ramen expert, Frank. How are you doing, man? Good, good. Thanks Thank you so much. Today. You know, I am a food expert, but right here on the screen it says, can you guys put it on the screen? Ramen expert? He won't do it. Okay, there it is. Born and raised in Japan, this guy does not mess around when it comes to these precious noodles. How many shops have you tried in Tokyo? I would say in Tokyo over 500, but there are like three to 4,000 shops in Tokyo, so I've got my really? work cut up. Ramen is something that's pretty filling already. Yeah. Like you have a yeah. bowl and you're like, I'm good. So yeah. when you do a tour, how many places do you go? You can't have six mini bowls. Well, today, yes. we're not doing mini bowls. <laughs> we're not doing that. Today we're gonna eat four huge bowls of ramen. I'm gonna feel terrible by the end of this. I mean, it's a lot of carbs. Our souls will feel great though. Ramen looks simple enough. Blanched wheat noodles, broth, and a variety of topping possibilities. But really great ramen makes an art out of combining these three. People are trying all kinds of new things. There's a lot of experimentation. It's like squid ink, pesto, and bacon and cheese in the ramen. And it actually matches up very well with the broth that they're using. I'm That's pumped. A, yes, as am I, as am I. Our first noodly destination right here. That's the name. This is precisely what makes Tokyo so special. Small, hole-in-the-wall joints that spend years crafting the perfect bowl of yum just for a select few, but only if you can figure out how to order it. Here, they have a vending machine yes. for ramen, but there's no ramen inside this vending machine. Unfortunately not. <laughs> okay. It looks like they have eight options. Yeah. They're going for a more classic ramen. That's why it's also called chu kasoba, which is what ramen used to be called before. The other dish that they have is the skimmen, where the noodles are separate from the broth. What? I thought that so, was illegal. I didn't think you could do that. Now it's legal. <laughs> I think we should both go dry. When eating ramen, I want the noodle to be as firm as possible. El dente, chewy, whatever you want to call it. And this stunning creation, locally called skimmin, delivers just that and so much more. Noodles in one bowl, rich niboshi broth with a complex smoky fish aroma in the other. When I get normal ramen, there is not this much noodle action on this side here. A ton of pork, eggs, everything is in here. Yeah, so we're literally just it's gonna be taking the noodles and you're dipping them into that broth. I'll demonstrate. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I was watching you the whole time. <laughs> you're a good slurper. Mm. The flavors, it is rich, and then a little bit of that smoky fish flavor. Yeah. So not only is the broth stunning, but these noodles are so kind of al dente. I gotta say, this is probably my top three ramens ever. I'm gonna awesome. try to out slurp you without dying. We're gonna have a slurp off right now. <laughs> go over it, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna go first. Let's very well done. <laughs> Let's see it, homie, what you got. Yo, they call him Hoover for a reason. That took too much on that last one. So what do you look for in a good ramen? What makes a good ramen? It starts with the broth, right? That addictive soup that you have and just like makes you want to go back to the ramen shop. The noodles should be firm and uh, toppings should be good. So everything has to come together harmoniously. Those three things. Man, this was an amazing start. Dry ramen noodles here in Tokyo. We're just getting started. Let's keep going. 
We have come to our second location. What's going on here? This is called Ramen Nagi Butao, and Butao literally means pork king. So as you'd expect, this is a porky porky broth. You'll notice just about every ramen joint uses these vending machines. It's quick, easy, and after the meal, instead of flagging down staff, you can just split. You may not always be able to read what you're ordering, but just aim for the most expensive one, usually on the top row and usually costing around 1,000 yen, about $10. While you're at it, you can even buy a drink. Is this whiskey? Yeah. Can you get whiskey through the vending machine? Mm. Even a child could do this and get whiskey. Yes. <laughs> they have whiskey soda right here as a highball. Yeah, it's 11.42 a.m. I'm gonna get a whiskey. Yes, yes, yes. So what should we actually get? They've got a red, black, and green one. Red is a little bit spicier. Mm. The black one has squid ink. And the green one has basil, cheese, and also bacon bits. So very interesting fusion work. I wanna try squid ink for sure. What okay. do you wanna get? I'll get red. All right, great. I thought my ramen ordering work was done, but no. You can even customize the strength of flavor, richness of oil. You guys want me to do extra heavy, right? Is it gonna ruin it? Is it like putting a stick of butter in there? Yeah, I mean. Garlic, type of pork, vegetables or no vegetables, spice level, and the firmness of the noodle. I wanna try extra firm noodles. I love just a hard kind of chewy noodle. This is a pork lover's wet dream. In order to get this creamy looking broth, the pork bone has been boiled on high heat for a few days, allowing the marrow to seep out. The bones break down to an almost milky state, giving the broth a cloudy quality, like a dream. We've got broth, we've got firm blanched noodles, now the black ramen toppings include minced pork, squid ink, yogurt, and garlic chips. Frank's red ramen is topped with minced pork, spicy miso, and a little yakiniku sauce. Here we have the squid ink ramen, black as night, darker than my heart, and then of course a side of whiskey, highball here. Day drinking. I know in a lot of countries I go to, the first process is just mix it all up. Is it the same thing here? I think it depends on the person, but what I like to do is kind of dig past that layer of top oil. Oh. So you're getting into that milky, creamy broth as well. So you're kind of paddling back, then you take it up and then have the broth. Is that a good one? Yeah. So take a look at this. The ink is just kind of on top. Underneath, we reveal that milky, creamy bone broth. It's very bony. Want to try it out? Oh, <laughs> my lips are oily, man, mm -hmm. but delicious. Smoky, wonderful, savory pork flavor. You want to mix it up? Yeah, sure. So I like to mix a little bit, you know, maybe with this guy at the top, I'll get that there and then pull up, you know. We got some pork, we got some noodles, put it all together, go. bam. <laughs> Wow, I cannot believe how creamy it is. The noodles are still nice and firm. To be honest, I don't think the squid ink gives a tremendous amount of flavor, but it does look really interesting. Want to try some of my soup? I mean, I don't mind it. Let's share. Yeah, a little pork, a little spice. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I missed mm. that one. Oh, the chili oil on there. It's, it's life changing. Like the hair <laughs> on the back of my neck was like, whoa, we're officially eating. What is going on? A world of difference between this place and the last place already. It's so fun that they have these different kind of flavors you can choose yeah. from. The black, the red, the green. Stunning. Stunning. <laughs> this is like my 10th pair of chopsticks now. Ryan Reynolds, that's what you look like. You're like the Deadpool of noodles. Really? What is going on behind us here? Here, they're using Chinese food and putting it together with ramen noodles. This place is known as the Tokyo Laboratory. Here, a pack of ramen scientists toil endlessly over the perfect bowl. So there's a hot and sour. There's also a mapo tofu, which is spicy tofu. So two very amazing dishes. All right, let's go. Let's do it. You've never seen ramen like this. The broth couldn't be any thicker. At some point, you just have to call it ramen sauce. This Centoro Mabaman sauce is made from fermented broad beans and chili paste with fermented black bean. It's meant to be spicy and almost sticky. Add in a bit of minced pork and finally tofu. Sambataman sauce is made with black pepper, red chilies, and a bit of vinegary sourness, topped with wood ear mushrooms, bamboo shoots, and tofu. Frank also special requested a load of coriander. 
I haven't seen this in any restaurant really? I've ever been to. Really? A strainer it's... spoon yeah, for yeah, eating. Yeah. That's really cool. All right. Is so... there a different strategy for how to eat this? Just dig in. You know, it's a very dramatic pull up with the noodles. You've got pull noodle up. terminology. You, he calls <laughs> it, call a it a pull up. up. <laughs> how do I do a successful pull up on these noodles here? With this, you have to dig pretty deep. So you're like literally reaching in. Yeah, past and you mean that metaphorically. Metaphorically and uh, oh. liter literally. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Kai, I think I need a single cam on this one. Just me. <laughs> Digging deep. Here we go. Oh, look how oh, there, deep it is. Deep. And then bringing it up. There we go. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's hard to get out. The broth is almost like fighting against you to pull it back. Yeah, down. <laughs> right? It's trying to stay inside. Oh, that is gorgeous. Nicely look done. At Nicely that. done. Better you ready? Let's do it. Mm. How is that? Firm, hearty noodles. Still has a nice chew to it. Very like tomatoey, uh, acidic sauce. It doesn't feel like a classic ramen at all. Hey, tell me about yours. What's going so on there? So this one is a hot and sour soup. The noodles are a little bit thinner. And what I like to do is add a lot of coriander on top of that. I love my coriander. I'm going to use my strainer spoon. Scoop out Let's some of this tofu. There we go. Mm. How is that? Silky. Disintegrates with your tongue. Man, you cannot go wrong. With some of that tofu mixed with those Szechuan chilies, they warm you up. It feels so good. I love that. Location four. Can you do the rest? I'm so full right now. <laughs> so the next place is called Minya Fujishiro. They're known for a creamy chicken ramen. Very mm. delicious, and we're going at the right time. It's a tiny little spot, as you can see. It's rumored that the chef here originally came from a fine dining background, and they specialize in thick and creamy chicken ramen. This style of ramen in Japan is known as Python. Well, guys, uh, it's gonna look like the picture. Let's go. This ramen is all about the creamy, thick, chickeny broth with the kind of savory, wholesome flavor that feels like mom wrapping a warm blanket around you after an afternoon of snowman building. It's good. It's a very premium grade of chicken. And the chickens in particular come from the mountains of Chotori Prefecture. Top it with sliced chasu, chicken egg, green onion, fish cake, and seaweed topping. How many bowls of ramen <laughs> have you made in your life? It's good. Like <laughs> She's got 176,000 ramen bowls that she's probably prepared. Oh, but out of the 176,000 bowls of ramen you've made, is this one like the most special? <laughs> What's your own? She said, of course it is. <laughs> okay, let's eat. let's eat. What I noticed is they have this kind of nori here. Do you wrap up anything in particular with this? I personally like to wrap up a little bit of the noodles in the nori. Basically, this way you can get a little bit of the seaweed and the noodles at the same time. Okay, so we have a little noodle in there. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of nori. It is steaming, piping hot still. Yes. You ready? Let's do it. Mm -hmm -hmm. Super delicious. Off the bat, no chicken flavor at all. It's very oceanic in nature. Try the broth by itself. That chicken will come out more. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh. Get more of the chicken here? Yeah, yeah. It is like chicken noodle soup, but like a little fishy. Now, at the beginning of the day, we had a slurp off. Yeah. How do you feel about how that went? Yo, they call him Hoover for a reason. I took too much noodles in my bite there. Well, it sounds to me like you want a rematch. That's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I want a rematch. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> what you got? Here we go. Done. That was pretty good. Was it was clean. You got them all in. All it, it was like seven slurps in a row. I think yeah. you won. Yeah. Most places have the egg already cut for you. In this place, they just put a whole egg in there. Yeah. They want you to have the, the cut on video. Wait, It'll be a dramatic cut. Get that egg pour in. Here we go. I'm just going to squeeze go. it until it reveals this there kind of go. soft, oh, half soft yeah. boiled yolk. There oh. we go. Oh, yeah. That is a nice, big, sticky yolk. Mm. Velvety, creamy yolk. As you saw today, we ate so many different kinds, like it is pretty hard to go wrong with this dish. For me, I was always intimidated by the kind of vending machine ramen. Right, I didn't get right. it. Everything's written in the local language, but after today, look for the most expensive thing. It should be around 1,000 yen. Yeah. Put your money in, get your ticket, hand it over, and then wait to see what shows up. 
Frank, my man, thank you so much for today. This was amazing. I learned so much about ramen and I have so much ramen literally inside <laughs> of me right now. And guys, you could have so much ramen inside of you too. You can do your own ramen tour here in Tokyo with this guy. The tour is put on through Tokyo by Food. Tokyo by Food has over 75 food experiences in Tokyo next year, even more cities. And even better than that, for each person who makes a reservation for a tour, they are feeding 10 people in Cambodia. It's a win-win situation. Also for you guys, if you are interested in going to Vietnam anytime soon, I highly recommend a company called OneTrip. OneTrip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about OneTrip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A Peace. Peace. Nailed it. All right, let's get some more noodles. I'm just it. kidding. Yes, I want to die. Fifth stop. <laughs> no, nope, no, nope, I'm done. <laughs> I can have one more bowl. We are lost for the cause.